In this part of the practical, we're going to have a look at different map projections. So what we're talking about here is, is changing the, the way the data is viewed on your screen from being the, the three-dimensional globe or spherical shape and onto a, a flat, a flat map. So, for example, we've got the data set here, and if you have a look at what what was in the shape of a, a globe, certain areas of this particular map have had to be stretched or squashed to fit it out to a rectangular shape. And that's what we're talking about when we're discussing projections. In the map view here, as I move my cursor around, you can see that the numbers down the bottom here are changing. So this is the latitude and longitude values as I, as I move over the map. So the, the first value there at the moment set at 43 is the longitude. And you'll see that that increases as I move easterly and decreases and down into negative values as I move to, um, to west of Greenwich. Now also on the, the second number here um, is, is, the, is the value for latitude. So you'll see somewhere around at the equator that number becomes zero and then as I move south of the equator it becomes increasingly negative down to 90 degrees at the south pole. Um, back to the equator at zero and then increasingly positive to a positive value of 90 at the north pole. So these values are given in decimal degrees and these are called coordinates. But so getting back to the idea of a map projection, we've started out here with the globe being projected as a rectangular shape. And the idea of this practical is to have a look at ways in which we can change projections and how that affects our measurements of distance, area and, and shape. It, come over to the table of contents and if you right click on the word layers and go down to the properties box, um, you'll see the data frame properties pop up here. Now under the coordinate system tab, I'm going to go to predefined, projected and world projections. And now there's a bunch of different proje projections that we can test out and play with here. There's also a lot of local ones as well, so there's, there's a lot of different options. At the moment you'll see it's just saying that we've got no projection, and that's just meaning that it's, that it's just been stretched out into the standard rectangular shape. Now as an example to start with, I'm just going to click on the first option here, so this ATOF projection, and you get some information about the, uh, the projection and coordinate system associated with that particular projection in the data frame properties box. I'm just going to move this slightly off screen here and go apply and have a look at what happens to our data set here. So as I've applied that, you'll see not only the shape of Antarctica has changed, for example, but the size of it as well. It looks considerably smaller here than what it did in the previous data view. And you'll have a look at the shape of Australia, for example, and it's, it looks somewhat skewed. So if we go back to the data frame properties, and if I was to clear the ATOF projection there, go back to no projection and apply that so it looks just as we started, again we'll see that Antarctica is quite stretched out. Australia looks, I guess, more upright, and the shape of it is quite different. The other question you'll also be asked is, is about a central meridian. So for example, I'm going to go back to the ATOF projection again, if we have a look at the way that appears. And you'll see in this information here, we're told that the central meridian is zero. Now it's your job to look up what meridian actually means and, and think about what, what we mean when we're talking about the central meridian. But to give you a bit of a clue, we're going to have a look at what, ch what happens when we change this value. So it's set at zero at the moment. If I go to modify, I can change this value of the central meridian and I'm going to change it to 175 just for argument's sake and hit OK. Now there's a limit to the number that you can change that to and that will become clear once you understand exactly what the meridian is. Now watch what happens to my projection here once I hit apply. So again in the data frame properties you'll see the central meridian is now set at 175 and now if I apply this we'll see that our projection changes somewhat. 
So the position, the position of Australia has changed and the shape of it's changed also and you'll see that as well with, with South America for example. So the, the further to the edge of the projection these the different countries get, the more skewed sideways they are. Now when you're coming to the stage of looking at quantitative differences between the different projections, what you need to do is to use this measurement tool. So it looks like the ruler up on your toolbar there. If you just click on that and you can have the option of measuring lines or areas. So we're going to start with making a line measurement, so that's the first button there. And for example if I was to measure from the west to the east coast of Australia, I would just click once on the west coast and double click to finish that line over on the east coast and it tells me the length or, or the distance between those two points that I've measured out there. Now it's not really appropriate to talk about that distance in terms of meters so we might want to change that to kilometers for example. And that's quite easy to do. You're also asked to discuss the, the differences in areas of different shapes. So we use the, the tool up here to measure an area click on that and all you need to do is just draw yourself out a polygon and hopefully do it with a little bit more care than what I'm demonstrating here um, just to go around say the, the outline of mainland Australia and again that's giving us an answer in square meters which is not really appropriate for that size feature so we'll probably change that to either square k's or hectares.